Good morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral. My name's Randy Hollerith. I'm the Dean of the Cathedral and I'm so glad you decided to worship with us this morning. I hope that wherever you are, you are safe and sound and well. Let us begin. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our canticle for this morning is the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid, for the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation, and on that day you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, and ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, help me today to realize that you will be speaking to me through the events of the day, through people, through things, and through creation. Give me ears, eyes, and heart to perceive you, however veiled your presence may be. Give me insight to see through the exterior of things into the interior truth. Give me your spirit of discernment, O Lord. Lord, you know how busy I must be this day. If I forget you, do not forget me. Amen. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 24th chapter, verses 35, excuse me, verses 25 to 32. Jesus said to his disciples on their way to Emmaus, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? Luke's account of the disciples' journey on the road to Emmaus is one of my favorite resurrection stories in all of Scripture. It has so much to tell us about the gifts that strangers can give, how strangers can be friends in disguise, and how we can meet Christ in anyone, almost anywhere. If you remember the story, it's Easter Sunday. Mary and the other women have discovered the empty tomb and seen two angels who tell them that Jesus has risen from the dead. 
Later that day, two other disciples, Luke does not tell us their names, which is important in and of itself because the fact that they are nameless means that they could be anyone. Indeed, they could be us. And in fact, we can be them if we are only willing to open ourselves to such an encounter on our journey through life. Anyway, these two disciples are traveling from Jerusalem down to Emmaus when they are joined by a stranger. Now, encountering strangers on the road was common then, and because it was always safer to travel in groups, if you were on the road by yourself, it was better if you could walk with others. This stranger had an interest in all that had taken place in Jerusalem, and after the puzzled disciples brought him up to speed on the current events, this person they had never met before proceeded to make sense for them out of the crazy and seemingly senseless days from Palm Sunday through Good Friday. As the day was ending, these two disciples invited this intriguing stranger to stay with them for the evening. In essence, they invited him home with them, which was the kind thing to do, and at the same time, the dangerous thing to do, because even, perhaps an even foolish thing to do, because you never know about strangers. But they take the risk and offer their hospitality to this still unidentified traveler who seems to know so much. And in a way that harkens back to Abraham and Sarah in the book of Genesis, who invite three, stang- three strangers to stay in their tents, strangers who make Sarah laugh and tell her that in her old age she will have a son. I imagine that these two disciples must have laughed out loud and shouted for joy when during dinner this strange person broke the bread and blessed the cup of wine and passed it among them, and they realized that as strange as all of this was, this was no stranger at all but the risen Christ who had come among them. Take what you want from this story. There's no shortage of good news here. From the truth that grace often unfolds in our lives when we are kind enough to offer hospitality to others, to the deep truth that Christ always comes among us, even when the person among us seems to be a stranger, to the sustaining truth that in the bread broken for us and the cup of wine passed for us, there is bottomless and abiding nourishment that goes beyond any and every feast we might have the pleasure of experiencing. But for me this morning, the one truth in this story that resonates the most profoundly in my own life is the truth that the risen Christ wants to know us, literally to come home with us, to live inside the doors of our homes and of our hearts in order to deepen us and bless us and nourish us in ways that lead to our own joy and laughter. The risen Christ is only a stranger on the journey of life if we want him to be. It is all of a matter of who we decide to take home with us. Amen. Now won't you join me as we pray together the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth and your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Gracious God, you alone know the secrets of our hearts. You alone understand the burdens we carry and the pain that we bear. As we make our way through this day, through this life, we need your healing grace. Grant us not only those things that we ask for, but more importantly, give us those good things that we need. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours. On this particular morning, we lift up to you those who are on our hearts and minds today. Pray for Stan, for Bruce, for Eliza. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.